hello and talk about a night divine. I don't know about you all, but hearing your voices, being able to sing together. I mean, I could sing all night. That's kind of part of my heart. Not by myself, thank you very much. I like singing with Brian and Sarah and all of you, um, but what a divine night that we get to sing praise to the Lord together. And uh, I'm so glad that we get to do that. If you're new here, welcome. I am Jody Skogan. I serve as the pastor of Oasis Church. And uh, just like Aaron said, second, second Christmas Eve of Oasis Church. And uh, we've been um, together for just a little over a year. Is it a year and a half? It'll, uh, it, it's wild. It's a great ride. Um, we are blessed, by the way, in case you're curious, we're blessed with a partnership with a church in Lakeville, Minnesota called Hosanna Lutheran Church. And they, um, they have said, yes, use our worship videos. Um, and uh, and we are really, really grateful for that because as a brand new church, we're, we're growing, we're learning. Uh, we have limited time sometimes. Uh, we're all 100% volunteer. And so uh, being able to worship with them and, uh, and worship together is really quite a gift. So uh, again, welcome. We're, we're very glad that you're here. Would you pray with me as we begin our message tonight? All right, Lord, um, thank you for, for uh, meeting us here. God, um, this is not just a story from thousands of years ago. This is your story, and it's alive, and it's continuing, God, and uh, we get to be a part of it, and we're really grateful for that. So would you uh, help us tonight understand just a little bit more of your goodness, um, or a lot more, but, you know, we can only handle so much. So uh, give it to us in the dose that we can handle it, God, and uh, help us to experience you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, um, you might know that I'm a bit on the interactive side. I really think about messages as a conversation. <laughs> um, even though I know I'm the one who's doing most of the talking, I really think of it like a conversation. And so I encourage you to really be a part of this conversation as we gather together around God's word. Um, as a kid, it would be the night before what? Christmas. Actually, the night before the first day of school kind of got you there. I would, uh, I would like to be prepared. Like it was like a new start, you know? I mean, I know we're on the brink of 2022, so you might kind of appreciate this new start, start sort of idea. Like I would lay out my clothes. Um, I don't know that I did this every year. My mom would be able to tell you for sure. But I, I definitely loved those years when uh, the night before, I just kind of got everything laid out. Even like in the bathroom, like I'd put a new towel on and I would like toothbrush, toothpaste, kind of everything lined up so I wouldn't have to think so much, I guess, as you start out a new year, a new day, having to wake up earlier. But I love that idea of a fresh new start, and I wanted to be ready. Well, this theme sort of carries through in my life in some other ways. I kind of had this internal motto, uh, or actually it's maybe more of a goal because it's not as though I live it, okay? It's aspirational in some ways for me, but it's be fully present and responsibly prepared. I, I love the idea. I wish I could like achieve that goal more often, um, but I really, I, I do like to be ready um, have you had some people ask you this Christmas, are, are you ready for Christmas? Are you ready for Christmas? I know there are kids in this room that are like, I'm ready for the sermon to be over so I can go home because I always got presents after worship. Anybody else going to get some presents? I need to know how, how hard this audience is going to be to like follow me, right? Because you're like looking at your clocks like, uh, we got, you know, somebody coming over. No, um, or maybe gifts, uh, hopefully a lot of gifts that um, you might open tonight. And you're like, when is, I I'm ready. Kids here might say, I'm ready. But I don't know, adults, have you had some moments of like, yeah, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> I mean, anybody have some gifts that need to even be open tonight that still aren't wrapped? It's just me and Dan and Tara. Oh, Brayden. Okay, good, good. I'm not, I mean, there are not that many of us apparently, but, um, it, you know, the night is semi-young yet, right? Maybe we don't feel quite ready yet. Anyway, somebody asked me that last week and I laughed because we didn't even have a Christmas tree up. And I swear everyone in our neighborhood, even people who are not 
Christ followers. I mean, it's evident that they worship in other ways. They've got the lights. Like, we literally didn't even have a Christmas tree. And um, we did the last two nights. We don't have any ornaments yet, nor is the star on the top of the tree. But we are getting closer. Uh, we're, I love the lights anyway. No, the answer when they asked was no, I'm not actually. Are you ready for Christmas? No, no, I'm not. Uh, earlier this afternoon, we were talking as we were preparing, getting ready for this afternoon. And I asked some people, what, when you think of the word ready, what comes to mind for you? Like, what comes to mind for you? In fact, could anybody shout out some things that come to mind for you when you hear that word ready? Somebody said ready, Freddy. Yeah? Yeah? Is that came to mind for people? Um, I, I uh, let's see what else. I did write a few thoughts down. Ready, set, go, right? At the beginning of a race, ready. Um, or maybe you think on your marks, get set, go. Um, for me, I, I uh, you know, I was a teenager in the 90s. And I was on the dance team, okay? So this is one thing that I, oh, we don't maybe have that. Um, you know the song, all ready for this? Da, 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 da. Okay, okay, some people have been nodding their heads in rhythm with me, I love that, okay. Um, so there's a lot of things that we think about when we think about the word ready. And I'm just curious about the people in God's story, this amazing story in history where Jesus comes in the form of a baby. Were they ready? Let's think about Mary for a second. Was she ready? No, she wasn't anticipating having a baby. Um, what about Joseph? Was he ready? In fact, a couple weeks ago, we talked about Joseph. The angel appeared to him because he was about ready to make a division from Mary in this legally binding engagement that they had. He was not ready to hear that Mary was going to have a baby. He wasn't ready for that. Thankfully, the angel helped him see by the power of God that he indeed was ready, that God knew indeed what he was doing. But Joseph, mm, I don't think he was overly ready at that point. Well, tonight we're going to talk about the shepherds. Were they, were they ready? When we read this passage, and if you have your Bibles with you, I'd encourage you to open them, or maybe you have an app on your phone, um, feel free. If you don't, that's fine too. Just listen, take it in. But we're going to turn to Luke chapter 2, starting with verse 8. And we're going to um, dig into this passage and um, explore. Now, you're familiar with the story. I want you to try to listen to it with new eyes. I don't know if you've ever seen a movie more than one time, and the second time or the third time or the fifth time you notice some things that you hadn't before. We're going to go back to Spider-Man on Sunday. We did already, yes. No spoilers. I know, I know. Some people are like, <laughs> I'm not ready, right? Okay, so we won't, I won't give anything away. I promise. I am... God and I talked about it earlier. Okay, uh, and so, so did my family. We like, okay, we're not going to say anything. Let's see what we can explore in this passage um, in Luke chapter 2, starting with verse 8. And, um, and I want you to listen because I, in a second I'm going to invite anybody who can, who wants to, again, remember the conversation, to tell me a few things that you notice from this passage, okay? So uh, here we go, starting with verse 8. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with, with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, that will be for all the people. For unto you, unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. 
And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Ah. What, what are some things that you're noticing? What pops out to you um, in this story? Like wh- what happens first? Let's go to verse eight. What, what are some things that you notice in verse, in verse eight at the beginning of the story? What's going on? What do you notice? They're, they are. They're going about their business. That's right. They're shepherds. They're doing their, their work, right? It's a, not a very um, ooh, glamorous work. In fact, uh, socioeconomically, they were pretty much at the bottom of the ladder, um, but they were working. They were doing their work. It was nighttime. What else are you noticing? What's happening? Who appears to them? An angel of the Lord. One angel, by the way, at this point. Right, But this angel must have been just so incredible because they are shaking in their sandals, right? Or maybe they're even barefoot. I don't know. They are afraid. They are filled, actually, it says, with with great fear. And then the angel says um, this repetitive, like, because obviously this is what people needed to hear. What does the angel say? The angel says, fear not. Don't be afraid. Fear not. Fear not. I am not coming with condemnation. You are not in trouble. Fear not. I bring you instead good news of great joy that will be for who? All people. Pretty sweet because um, likely the shepherds were of the Jewish faith. Um, Later we're going to hear, not tonight, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, but the, the wise men likely were not. They were likely Gentiles, not of the Jewish faith, for all people. This is a repetitive message throughout all of the Old Testament that the Messiah would come for all people, not just some. And these shepherds are probably a a pretty interesting picture of that. It's not just for the elite, the people who kind of got it together, the people who would be most ready to welcome the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, this Messiah who's going to turn everything that's broken and make it right again. All right? Ooh, it's good stuff. Good news of great joy for what? Unto you, shepherds. Can you imagine these guys who've probably been looked past all of the time? And the angel's like, uh, to, to you. And they're like, who? Me? For unto you this day is born in the city of David, that's Bethlehem, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. He is king. This is a, this is a, a name of regal, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Appointment. This is a forever king, this Jesus, the Messiah. Christ means Messiah, okay? He is the one who's, he was, who has been long promised. Hey, let's take a look at this uh, video. It kind of gives a, a vantage point of maybe what the shepherd's perspective might have been that night. Check it out. I can't believe this is happening. Oh, I got to get a grip. I got to, uh, I got to tell people. That's what I got to do. I got to, I got to go tell people. I got to, I got to share the news. I got to let them know that, uh, (laughs) who's going to listen to me, huh? Who's going to listen to me? I mean, I, it's not like I have any kind of reputation. People don't give me two looks. And I'm going to be the one. I'm going to be the one to talk about angel sighting and Messiah's coming. <sighs> okay. Okay, okay, okay. No, no, I just got to... I just got to put my manners on. That's it. I put my manners on, I gotta talk right. That's it, and then I gotta, I gotta clean up. I can do that, I can clean out under my fingernails.
There's no hiding this man. It just don't make sense. None of it makes sense. Maybe that's it. He said, uh, good news. Good news of great joy for everyone. Because the Savior was born today in Bethlehem. He said we'd recognize him by a very specific sign. He said that baby would be wrapped in cloths and lying in a... <laughs> and this was the kicker. <laughs> that baby would be lying in a manger. <laughs> A Messiah in a feeding trough. <laughs> oh. I mean, even my family is better off than that. We didn't have two sticks to rub together, but at least I had a, a bed to lay my head in when I was a kid. I've been waiting my whole life for this Messiah. And now it seems he may be more like me than I ever thought possible. <laughs> well, I think that angel got it wrong. This ain't good news. This is the best news ever. <laughs> Come on, boys. Were the shepherds ready <laughs> to be some of the first to welcome the newborn king? Were they ready? I mean, did they have sort of all of the things in order like the night before? Like, were they ready for this new start? Because everything was about to change for them. You know, in human standards, the answer would be no. I mean, did they have a reputation that could handle such important regal messaging? Were they influential? Did they have confidence? Were they educated in the ways of God? Did they have the manners? I love that. Like, got to get my manners on, right? I mean, were they, were they presentation ready? <laughs> Did they have a PowerPoint laid out? Because they had a message to give. I mean, were they, were they ready for the, for the whole presentation? Had they rehearsed? Were they cleaned up? No, not by human standards, but by God's measure, they were more than ready. Reputation and all, yeah. Lack of social influence, yeah. Lack of education, God used those folks like us all the time, just as they were. God knew what he was doing. And by the way, he's calling you. If you're hearing my voice, whether online or in person, he is calling you also to be a messenger of the greatest news ever. If you've got some excuses running through your mind about, well, mm, not me, ah, I don't have those things that maybe somebody should have in order to do that. Listen, God was the one who indicated that these shepherds were ready, just as they were. Again, God knew what he was doing. Now, are you feeling ready for this massive invitation? that I just shared with you. I mean, the fact is that the King of Kings and Lord of Lords is inviting you into a dynamic relationship with him where he chose, chooses, is choosing, and will continue to choose you to be a part of a dramatic story where lives are changed, eternal addresses are modified, okay? Where people who need freedom are set free because of the good news that we have. You know, I love in O Holy Night, there's a lyric in there I can remember it. Your God, um, how does that go? Your, God, uh, your law is love and your gospel is peace. And we can sing past that song, uh, those lyrics. Your law, your law is love. And your gospel, it's, 
It's peace. Do we have some people outside of these walls who need to know that God's law is love and his gospel is peace? I know I do. I have a need to remember that at the root of my issues, and there are many, the answer isn't me. And it isn't the people around me. And it isn't my job. And it isn't um, acceptance. And it isn't getting it together. And it isn't all kinds of things. The answer is Jesus. His law is love and his gospel. It's peace. And I don't know if you're feeling ready. I honestly don't. Tonight, honestly, I did not feel ready. In fact, tonight I got here and someone asked me a really good question. Are you ready? I'm like, I don't think I'm ready. But God is. God is. He's ready. He's ready uh, to go with us to take the next, just the next step in a relationship with him where he invites us to experience him in whole new ways. He is making us ready ready to experience him in new ways. I want to tell you, too, that Oasis Church, we don't have it all together either. I mean, this is a beautiful place. We're just normal people, okay? We have a desire to know, love, and follow Jesus. We aren't quite sure what one year from now looks like. What's the third uh, Christmas Eve worship service with Oasis Church? (laughs) I'm not exactly sure. God has us ready, though. He invites us into an adventure that is, like, unmatched. Like, I don't know what you have in mind for your career path or your education path or even the next semester, students, what what that looks like for you, but I guarantee you that you are invited into an adventure like none other by the King of kings and the Lord of the lords who, who doesn't wait for people to have all of the readiness that we might expect. But like the shepherds who are just going about their business, he encounters them in a dramatic way. In Oasis Church, that's our desire, to join in the adventure that God himself invites us into, where we come together on Sunday mornings and we are ready to leave. You know, I got to tell you, Izetta, Izetta, are you hearing me? You know, you really inspired me tonight because you were up here with Jeanette. Yeah, you're up here with Jeanette, right? And she gave you a light and then she said something like, oh, you know, there was some kind of indication that you thought, oh, it's time to go. And you were like, no, I don't know if you've got like an agenda to get to after worship tonight, which I totally appreciate. But she was ready to go, right? Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Buckle up, my friends. Let's go on this adventure, and let's remember also that we're not in it alone. I want to share with you a graphic that's kind of important, a picture of what's important, um, I guess, as we think about what God calls us into as a community of faith on mission together. All right, Oasis Church, we're a community of real people who desire to know, love, and follow Jesus. What's it look like to be in a relationship with him? and with uh, other followers of Jesus. Here's a picture that kind of seems to make some sense to us. First, God initiates a relationship with us. It can't be better illustrated and experienced, but on this night, when we think about God himself coming in earthly flesh, in this vulnerable child, but not only that, but to grow up and to teach and to lead and to die and to overcome death in the grave, He starts a relationship with us. He knows, loves, and invites us to follow. He leads us. And then the next piece is that we have opportunity to respond to him. We're invited to do that. And so that's sort of the up of of that cross. We desire then to know, love, and follow him because of his grace. His grace starts it. We can't help but be compelled to know more. God, I need more of your freedom. I need more of your truth. That's the experience experience abundant life that's the experience part and then the abundant section okay is about community because abundance is something we're also invited into to experience God and then to experience the abundance of life that comes in connecting with Christ followers and lastly we're sent out just like Isetta and Liam I think and whoever else yeah right I mean you were just like on your way let's go I hear about the light I'm gonna go share the light right and so we're invited into this experiencing abundant life where we are, we go out. We're called by God to share and to serve. 
Like we do not exist for ourselves just so people come and more people come on Sunday mornings. We are called to be the light of the world, a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. That's what Jesus says about his people. So that's, that's a picture of what I think God calls each of us into in relationship with one another, that we might be encouraged and strengthened and helped in the midst of real life and that the world might know this incredible good news. Do you notice what happens to the shepherds? Let's go to, uh, let's see, verse um, 16. I love, though, I love that part of um, Mary treasure all these things in her heart. I love that. She treasured these things in her heart. <laughs> and then they go. They go back. They go back to their work. I mean, their sheep are needing them, yes. <laughs> but they are now forever changed. And they are now compelled to communicate the truth of the gospel. That's Jesus Christ loving us so much that he doesn't stay far away, but he comes close. And that's who we celebrate tonight. We, we are, we're having a party tonight, my friends. Those, all of us who are common and flawed and wounded, just real people. And we're called and beckoned into a relationship with one who can meet the needs that are at the root of our pain. All right, and we get to do that. We get to do that together, and what a what a joy that is. So, let's pray, and let's pray for uh, for us to realize that God has made us ready. All right, Lord. Um, yeah. Okay. So we might not feel ready, but you have a, a quite a track record, Lord, of um, of calling people like the shepherds to respond to you and your goodness. Glory to God in the highest. And they respond, Lord, may that be us. We ask right now that by your grace, we could respond all the more with the depths of our hearts to just go. Like these little ones just showed us like this great news, like help us just go. And then remind us as we come back together that we're not alone in that. And, and what a gift that is too, God. Thank you for readying us. <laughs> uh, we are ready. Thank you, God. You are awesome. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.